Hello, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you're all, uh, I'm audible clearly, you're all able to hear me. My name is Tita Rangaswamy. Uh, I work as a sol finance uh, solution architect for car technologies. Do we know all of them are able to hear properly? Yes, if the audio is not clear or if you are not able to hear us, uh, do uh, send us a message or, uh, you know, uh, flag your message uh, and and we'll do the needful from here but uh, but i suppose uh, you know you can hear me clearly uh, i welcome you all of you to this session uh, the plan for this session is uh, for me to talk about uh, the closing process uh, on s4 hana so what we will do is we'll briefly look at uh, how the financial closing process is uh, handled on S4 HANA. Uh, I will briefly touch upon the financial closing cockpit as well, uh, giving you all a background. Some of you may have already worked on uh, the financial closing cockpit. Uh, but the important purpose of this uh, webinar would be to highlight uh, some of the improvements, some of the changes uh, that have uh, come in uh, on S4 HANA, uh, especially with regard to the financial closing process uh, and the uh, reconciliation uh, activities that we do and the intercompany reconciliations and stuff like that. So um, that would be the sort of uh, real focus, but uh, to put that into context, uh, what I will have to do is to, uh, you know, briefly outline uh, the closing process and the financial clo clo closing cockpit tool in uh, SAP because the uh, tool uh, was existing in ECC as well. Uh, financial closing cockpit is uh, not something new that has come on S4 HANA uh, that was there in ECC as well. Uh, but uh, they have made some improvements. They have made some performance tunings to that. They have brought in some uh, new architectural changes into that uh, on S4 HANA. So that's what we will uh, we will see as we go, by, uh, you know, as we carry on in this presentation. Uh, and towards the end of the presentation, you know, if you have any questions uh, or need additional information, feel free to uh, ask me. Um, I'll, I'll try my best to provide my inputs on that. So uh, with that uh, brief introduction, so that is going to be the agenda for this webinar. So with that brief introduction, um, we'll go over to the agenda. Uh, so as you can see, like uh, what we uh, we will briefly outline uh, the period closing function uh, because more of, most of you, I presume, would be coming from uh, finance uh, function only. So uh, I don't need to go into a lot of detail on this area. Uh, so the, 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 I presume this will be very familiar to you. But as I said, like if I straight away jump on to uh, the uh, improvements or, or the enhancements that have come about in S4 HANA in this area, uh, you know, it will be a little difficult to put things in context. Uh, but I, I will definitely highlight uh, the specific improvements which have come about on S4 HANA as regards uh, financial closing. Okay, we'll see the uh, some of the aspects of this tool uh, because uh, many features from this tool have been incorporated uh, into uh, Fury apps on uh, S4 HANA. So it does it does definitely help uh, if you already have a sort of a working exposure to the financial closing cockpit on ECC. Uh, you'll find life a little bit easier when you uh, migrate to S4 HANA. Um, and uh, as I said, towards the end of the presentation, uh, we will we will specifically highlight some of the areas where you know uh, architecturally or uh, through means of uh, program code um, or uh, from a data model perspective, some of the changes that have come about, and how that will actually help. Uh, in in the closing process, how it reduces the time, how it uh, optimizes the performance, how it sort of uh, you know we can eliminate uh, some of the bad jobs and things like that. So those are some things that we will touch upon during the later part of the presentation. 
Okay. Now, uh, just to give you uh, or or you you people will be quite familiar with this process. Uh, what what are the typical uh, you know functions in uh, a closing in a finance uh, department? We, we we all come from uh, finance background. So what we will uh, do from from the left side, if you see, we start at uh, the basic accounting entries right then we will look at an entity close which will which will be talking in the context of a legal entity right uh, when we are talking about an entity close this would cover the sort of uh, transactions between legal entity it will cover intra legal entity it will cover inter legal entity transactions as well and of course uh, all the uh, inter company sales uh, reconciliations, goods receipts, uh, cost allocations, transfers, everything that happens. So that, that would be the second box. And uh, then we come to the corporate close where, you know, which, which is a, a sort of a higher level of uh, consolidation. So you can have a single level consolidation, you can have a multiple nested level of consolidation depend, depending upon how many levels you have uh, in a consolidation routine typically. Uh, and then financially, uh, finally, you, we come to the reporting and disclosure part where, you know, you be coming to areas like whether you are on US GAAP or whether you are on IFRS or what 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 uh, reporting standards you need to adhere to what are the disclosure requirements and things like that and of course coupled with that is the uh, compliance part the disclosure part the compliance parts and the uh, regulatory filing that you need to do with the statutory authorities right so mirroring this process, I, I don't need to go into a lot of detail on this because uh, you know you would you would all be pretty much familiar with this uh, this routine because we we, we do it pretty much uh, you know during every month end. Um, how the uh, actual uh, this is the, this the financial closing cockpit uh, uh, operations is typically structured. Uh, on uh, S4 HANA and was structured on ECC also, pretty much uh, uh, following the same sequence, right? Uh, how we go about the process is to, uh, we have a broad plan uh, as to in which we have, we list down the activities, we list down the business processes in a sequential order as to how these activities are to be carried out. Then we have a, a, a sort of a typical, in a conventional way, we have a, we would have an Excel sheet or a structured list of tasks, which we will execute. Uh, this this is the plan, of course. Then uh, when we actually do the month end, we run through the uh, actual uh, jobs, uh, analyze variances. We see what sort of variances have arisen, or or we monitor the results, uh, whether you know uh, how many jobs have failed, if everything has gone through perfectly, or what is the rate of completion? Are we around 80% complete, 90% complete, or at what level of consolidation are we? Things like that. Typically, so so the, the tool on SAP also almost mirrors the exact sequence, right? Um, as to how uh, we would uh, uh, do it from a business uh, process perspective. Okay. Okay, so uh, again, like these are sort of general uh, perspectives uh, or uh, general uh, aspects uh, where, where I'm not going to dwell into a lot of detail because these are typical accounting things. So uh, from a finance point of view, basically we would have uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable if you are running with a lot of assets. You get a lot of uh, you know transactions on asset accounting. You have to reconcile the uh, asset accounting. These are all sub modules uh, in SAP accounts receivable, accounts payable. These are all sub ledgers. So uh, typically in ECC we had to actually uh, as a part of the closing process uh, we had to keep the figures reconciled as well. Uh, though SAP offers an inbuilt uh, integration uh, between sub modules. Um, we have seen uh, lots of cases, especially in ECC, and this is one point where where uh, we will uh, we will talk about uh, the one of the major changes that have come about in S4 HANA. Uh, if you see in asset accounting uh, in ECC, that that totally was a separate sub module, uh, and uh, you know 
technically from a technical architecture point of view the asset accounting transactions uh, were kept separate um, they, 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 there was a separate recording there was a separate posting in assets and that was sort of tightly integrated with the general ledger right so there was still a need to reconcile and integrate uh, the asset accounting sub module and the general ledger sub module Te technically it was all, all always possible for differences to arise even between the accounting accounts payable sub module and the general ledger module right so uh, uh, the what i am coming to say here is uh, even though everything was under the same system um, we still uh, had scope for uh, differences and there was still a need uh, for reconciling all these sub modules with the general ledger right and typically this uh, as a as a part of the closing process what we had to see is you know what sequence we do first do we do we do we finalize all the invoices first uh, then we do the clearing uh, then we then we run the asset accounting depreciation uh, do all the period end accounting in asset accounting uh, then final so that the depreciation and all, uh, all the planned depreciation uh, stuff gets to the general ledger uh, and finally at a final stage uh, we will come to the general ledger where we have we would have a separate uh, worksheet uh, you know doing foreign currency valuations accrual adjustments you know passing final adjustments and stuff like that so typical typical uh, i'm i'm sure all of you would be very well aware of uh, the closing process but these are the sort of uh, this is the environment uh, that we typically had in an ecc setup I'm mentioning this because uh, this will take us into a context of how things have uh, changed uh, in S4 HANA, or what we will see different uh, when we come when we move to S4 HANA. Uh, if you if you see uh, from from a typical closings uh, point of view, uh, from a business process point of view, from a sequencing point of view. Uh, the basic stuff still remains, right? The basic stuff still remains. You still need to uh, carry out these functions, but the way in which these are done, the speed at which these are done, uh, the and and a lot of data redundancy has been removed, um, right? So so that is where the improvement comes in, right? So for for example, uh, if you had probably forty tasks uh listed in your ecc uh, here after moving to s4 hana on, on on the assumption that we have uh, done all the uh, configuration and all the setup correctly uh, we could probably be, be looking at uh, around say 20 to 25 tasks or, or even lesser than that so that's where the optimization comes in in s4 hana how do we exactly do that or what are the pointers to that that is something we'll see in towards the later part of this slide uh, of this webinar Okay, this was uh, a typical, uh, you know, worksheet that uh, we we all would be very very familiar with, uh, right? You have different sub modules, you have assets, you have AP, you have AR, you have a reconciliation between management accounting and uh, financial accounting. You know, you send costs from finance to controlling, and from controlling, you disperse or distribute or assess the costs from one cost center to probably 20 other cost centers uh, you might be doing settlements for for capital projects uh, you know which again might be uh, you know passed on to different project ids or different wbs elements so 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 on and so forth right so the the bottom line here is the it is quite a sort of a complex uh, set of tasks um that uh, that that we typically see in a typical month end schedule right uh, and that is why the need to actually uh, automate this and to actually organize this properly so a great deal of it can be automated um and the sequence can be sequencing can be automated and uh, the monitoring uh, because the sequencing is automated the monitoring uh, and the analysis part of it becomes much more effective. So that is the uh, basic uh, idea behind structuring a tool and to configuring uh, a, a tool which, which, which will handle this uh, uh, scheduling of tasks for us. 
uh, that is the essence of uh, the closing corporate but uh, even uh, in that closing corporate because of the structural changes that have come about in s4 hana we will see uh, uh, you know how 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 sap has tried to further uh, improve and uh, optimize on an existing tool the basic structure of this tool still remains uh, the same okay this is uh, uh, here we again uh, depict the same the same flow of operations right we we what what i said in the beginning you have an accounting angle where we are talking at at a legal uh, at a uh, document level or uh, at at a business process level of an individual com uh, uh, company uh, then once all the business processes have been done we come to the closing operations which is the entity close where we are looking at uh, the company closure and the intercompany closure and the intercompany reconciliation part of it then uh, once that is done all individual uh, legal entities have been closed uh, then uh, we go to the next step which is the consolidation of accounts for corporate reporting uh, and the final step is, of course, you know how, how from a corporate reporting point of view, how you manage disclosure, how you these these are the overall uh, objective uh, of 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 the, the essence on which the closing corporate tool is structured, right? And of course, this sits on the basis uh, basic uh, tenets that uh, you know your process controls have to be in place, and uh, you have to adhere to the uh, governance uh, model that is in place. Okay, um, I, I'm I'm I, I'm not sure if you have actually used the uh, closing cockpit before, uh, but I will still uh, even if you have used it before, I will still uh, give a very brief uh, outline of that for the benefit of uh, uh, the attendees on this call. So typically, you have a plan uh, phase, right, where you have something called a template uh, where you list down all the tasks. And the expected uh, duration who does what at in what sequence when a particular activity will start when how much what will be the duration when it will be end uh, when, when it will end right and when it completes right how the workflow is to be structured uh, who is to be notified that uh, the predecessor's job is complete and the next next job uh, requires action of abc or some so the, all these things go into the planning phase right and then uh, you know once the structure uh, and the plan is uh, completed then we come to the execution stage we kick off the jobs uh, one by one and uh, you know once once the job st job start executing uh, then we we can this is one tool where you can actually keep a tab on the actual progress uh, of you know what jobs have failed what have been the variations what jobs are taking much more time uh, you know uh, what are the variances that need to be need to uh, watch out for or if some job has failed how how do we re-trigger that who who needs to be notified for that and all all that stuff right typically in a monitoring phase right and finally you know uh, out of the jobs that have run successfully we come to the analysis part of it right where we we study the variances uh, we, we study the allocations that have happened or uh, you know if if the particular jobs have failed what what what, what are the reasons for that what, what what learnings we we take from that so typical typically this 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 would be the typical cycle right and this is uh, the, the, this is exactly what happens in uh, closing cop it as well. This is just a tool which uh, helps us to plan uh, and to execute and to monitor, right? The, typically, these th three are uh, 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 the cr critical functions in a typical uh, in a, in a, in a clo closing scenario, and uh, we use this tool to uh, 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 complete all these all the all all these tasks. In a pretty much organized and an automated way, and finally the analysis part, right? They have, there is a clear audit record there as to which task ran, uh, you know, uh, what was the result, and uh, you know, that there is a very clear audit trail there um, yeah, uh, on what action needs to be taken or if some correction activity uh, activity needs to be taken on a subsequent run. So it's all, you know, uh, that is that is one other advantage of this tool, yeah. Okay, um, 
these sub subsequent uh, you know three or four slides uh, this is again uh, not specifically with respect uh, to the improvements on s4 hana uh, right but still uh, i thought it uh, better to uh, outline this process in a little more detail because the basic structure uh, of setting up the financial closing cockpit on s4 hana also would be the same as i said the tool is the same right um, so you you have a you define a global plan right that's where i said that you have the templates and all default tasks schedules and hierarchies like sequencing which tasks have to be done in what sequence this this is actually captured captured in that uh, template right which uh, one look at that will give you a very very good sequential view of which tasks have to be run in what sequence who does what uh, this is, uh, you know, a template which you can use for sort of different uh, legal entities. Even uh, you have a common template, you have a global template, and you can use that template to uh, tweak it uh, to, to uh, you know, uh, different requirements in separate legal entities. For example, uh, if the legal uh, uh, or, or uh, legal requirements in a particular uh, geographical location. Uh, requires you to perform some additional tasks you can take the template from the global one and make changes to that right so that way it becomes very easy to uh, uh, roll out uh, 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 a common template across different legal entities right and uh, that you uh, as i said like you have a global template and then you have the task list which gives you the break the detailed breakdown of the task right in terms of what starts what is the preceding job what is the succeeding job uh, how much time it uh, what is the plan duration and all these things uh, that, that that's what this uh, slide uh, is saying right so this this is what we are trying to outline here is how you know from a responsibility point of view uh, how things flow in a typical closing process so uh, the plan for a global template on a previous slide would be uh, corporate accounting right this is usually the head office which finalizes the global template uh, of how how the how how what what different entities uh, uh, the template that the different entities need to use um and then each local accountant at a unit level will uh, concentrate on the task level uh, with the specific tasks that are relevant uh, by a general rule you would try to stick to the global template but of course uh, you know you can make changes as i said and then uh, you have uh, subsequent uh, uh, sub modules you have jl asserts uh, people sitting on different sections cost accountants management accountant asset accountants gl reporting accountant executing these tasks right and uh, you can see the status of this you know uh, tasks are green were run executed immediately or you know workflow notifications that need to be triggered right so and uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going into a lot of these things because i want to concentrate more on the s4 hana uh, part all right um, so i, I, I this the, the it, it is helpful from a content point of view that's why I, I i thought it better to just to include some references to this right uh, and uh, entity close tasks uh, you know you close uh, respective uh, legal entities and then you come to the intercompany reconciliation uh, uh, aspects uh, as well right so yeah so here uh, you know we can we can uh, sap provides additional tools like uh, business uh, netweaver business client where uh, actually you can monitor the progress uh, you know if you have different subsidiaries you can keep a tab on which uh, subsidiary has, uh, you know, in what stage they are of the closing. Have they are they at ninety five percent or they they are still at forty percent? What needs to be done if you if you need to send reminders? So this uh, you can see on the on the screenshot there that it gives you a very clear uh, view of which ones are green or which ones are waiting for action or which ones have not even been started. 
so it, that from that point of view it gives a very good view of uh, any corrective action that may need to be taken okay right and then uh, this again uh, is 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 it's it's the stage this analysis part since there is a very clear audit evidence uh, and uh, the, uh, the the actual uh, durations are captured uh, against the planned durations it becomes uh, very easy to see where all we slipped where all uh, in which cases we took uh, the the actual execution took much more time than what was planned and what we need to do from a corrective actions point of view for subsequent runs if if uh, there are some bottlenecks what what how they need to be removed so on and so forth these these are the things on the monitoring uh, analyze phase right so uh, and uh, i'll just briefly pop over to the previous one um excuse me yeah that's the one so finally once you have done the monitoring and analysis you submit uh, the corporate guys take over from there and uh, you know uh, the 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 corporate and reporting angle comes from as i said like uh depending upon the accounting standards or depending upon the global reporting that you need to do right uh, maybe reporting on uh, multiple accounting standards so so those things you will need to pick up and the tasks will also uh, would need to be designed on the basis of uh, you know your reporting requirements so if you if you for example if you are just following a single reporting then you would have a task which uh, just uh, do the operations for a one local ledger whereas if you have multiple reportings you would repeat the same tasks for additional ledgers also which would be uh, reporting on uh, additional accounting standards okay okay so with that brief introduction so this is this is typically this is nothing new right uh, we would all be very much familiar uh, with the closing process and the tools that we use um, uh, for 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 our um, for our typical uh, account closing in a co uh, company um and uh, you know what we have seen so far is uh, we have this uh, sap closing cockpit tool which uh, very much uh, helps us to plan for that sequence that uh, monitor uh, and actually uh, trigger the executions also from within the tool right so you can plan you can actually uh, measure the actuals you can monitor and analyze and of course uh you can you know there is always an audit evidence there so so that acts as a data rep repository for future uh, runs as well okay so with that uh, we will uh, come to the uh, s4 hana part now right so how things have changed uh, on s4 hana so this what we have seen till now is a typical closing process uh, on on let's say sap uh, ecc okay so uh, there are there are uh, there are certain new elements which have come about um, one of the main things is the uh, architectural uh, change which has come about in s4 hana and that is on ecc um, whenever uh, you from typically from a closing point of view what used to happen on ecc where uh, was that uh, the the totals uh, the aggregates were actually stored uh, on tables so if you have a monthly total if you have a period wide total that used to be actually stored uh, in a table and when you run these uh, uh, month end tasks uh, the programs would automatically go to these tables and get you the summary figures so so in that sense what what used to happen is if uh, if some of your jobs are still uh, waiting to be done right if they have not yet executed then obviously uh, that the, the totals uh, will not reflect the correct picture uh, the position that you have in your tables will not be the most updated position that you have but with the coming of s4 hana this is one of the major architectural changes that they have done is uh, the, the concept of totals uh, being stored in tables has gone right uh, what they will instead do is it is the 
the code which actually computes uh, the aggregates uh, and and uh, the uh, reporting dimensions uh, in real time for example if you say that for the month of may uh, uh, give me all the open invoices uh, for which are still open uh, 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 for the month of May. So in ECC, typically what it will do is it will go to a particular table, it will put a query there, it will fetch uh, the invoices which meet a particular criteria, and then so the, 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 there was a latency there, and uh, it used to go back and forth uh, to the database. But uh, in S4HANA, what this is uh, due to the architectural changes, what it will actually do is the program, uh, because all the information that is needed for the report is actually available in the uh, document level, at a document level. Whether a particular invoice is open or not, or was it paid or was it blocked, all the details is available at a document level. So the program. Uh, you know, be it one invoice or uh, 10 invoice or uh, probably a thousand invoice, the program computes uh, it on a real time because it has a document repository uh, which has a detail at a line item level. So any report that you uh, uh, call is actually giving you the latest position based on the last document that you have posted. So you are not dependent on any bad jobs to complete to give you the correct picture. Right, so that is what is uh, called a real-time reporting. This is one of the major architectural changes uh, that have come about. And of course, uh, personal, uh, personalized analytics is uh, uh, through. Uh, they have got, they, they have brought in a lot of uh, uh, Fury apps. Uh, now, uh, Fury apps were there in ECC also, uh, but uh, they were they were uh, they they were very limited. Uh, right, we didn't have a, a lot of Fury apps to support, and this was because uh, all the uh, details of a document were not captured at a line item level. Right, this was the main reason. But with the coming of S4 HANA, uh, everything is available on a line item level, so you just need a Fury app to call the detail that you want to look at. So to that extent, uh, now, uh, since we have much more granularity available at a line item level, so the analytics can be uh, enhanced as well. So that, that's what they have brought in a lot of theory apps. Uh, we will see to the later part of the presentation, even in terms of closing, which help us, which give us a much more detailed insight into, into the nature of the tasks uh, into the nature of the closing process itself. Okay, so uh, the other thing, uh, the major thing is uh, again uh, from an uh, architectural point of view, uh, right? So what uh, this uh, change is uh, now in S4 HANA, from a technical point of view, uh, they have merged. Uh, all the subledgers along with the GL. So you do not have uh, a, a, an asset accounting working differently or uh, an AP working differently uh, or, or a CO module working differently. So all that concept has gone. Instead, what uh, what we now have uh, in, in uh, S4HANA is a concept called, called universal gender. So whether you post in assets, whether you make a transaction in cost centers or profit centers or uh, project systems or asset accounting or accounts payable or accounts receivable anywhere in the uh, in, 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 in the uh, system, in the ERP system, uh, in the S4 system rather, it is reflected in the universal general, right? So, and there is just one line for it. There is just one record for it. Okay, uh, one, one record may have multiple line items, but that record is stored in a single place. Meaning we don't have part of the data in asset accounting tables, part of the data in GL account tables, part of the data in uh, controlling tables. That sort of a segregation of data has gone now. It is all the data, all the core financial data is stored in just one table, which is the core fundamental table for uh, S4 HANA, and that is called universal general. That table is called AC Doc A uh, in, a, in a technical parlance, but uh, that is called a universal general table. 
So the, the result of this is a lot of reconciliation effort has actually gone. So you don't need to reconcile assets with GL. You don't need to reconcile AP and AR with GL because they are permanently reconciled. Right, unless of course you, you you when you do the balance transfer to S4 HANA, we just need to make sure that you know the balances are all reconciled, the asset subledgers and all the subledgers are reconciled with the main GM. But once we have ensured that, then from an on an ongoing basis, there is no concept of reconciliation because it is just one data set. Right, so that is that is uh, one more major uh, enhancement that we need to keep uh, keep in mind. Uh, and then we have uh, the power of, uh, uh, you know, the power of uh, the the HANA database, which which actually, uh, you know, enhances uh, and and reduces the actual runtime of the jobs. Okay, uh, so we one of the days where we, we we would just need to execute a bad job and come the next day to view the results. So it it is it is a much more faster process now. Um, and uh, to this effect, the reconciliation, uh, the uh, and there are a lot of areas which we'll see in the subsequent slides where the system does automatically what you used to manually do in ECC. For example, profitability segment derivation or GR anal GRIR analysis and all those things. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It is now possible for the system to, uh, it, it is intelligent enough uh, to match the things on its own. Uh, of course, some additional customizing needs to be done for that, uh, right? But the system has the built-in capability to do that. We'll see that in the subsequent slide. So these are some of the major uh, innovations that have been uh, that have come about in S4 HANA, which actually uh, would have the effect of reducing the uh, closing time that we see on S4 HANA significantly. Okay, so so this is this is actually called a, a sort of a soft close, uh, you know, uh, because uh, what you post in the other uh, legal entity is immediately visible from their side also, uh, and uh, there is a sort of a continuous uh, uh, reconciliation in the sense that you don't need to actually trigger this job uh, because it is very voluminous or because it is very time consuming. You don't actually need to wait till the month and to schedule it. Uh, this runs uh, 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 on an ongoing basis because of two reasons. One, uh, because I, as I said, uh, right, the system uh, is, is more intelligent now to uh, do the derivation and uh, the assignment of the posting itself. And in many cases, it will do the matching of when you, when you call the intercompany report, it will propose the matchings to you, saying that this this these uh, two two offsetting entries I am able to match. So all you need to do is to just uh, agree to it and just mark off those entries. And uh, it is it is a continuous reconciliation process rather than something that you do at the month end, right? So before you do. A hard close at the month end. Uh, the message here is uh, you you are in a position to uh, do a soft close at much sooner intervals, probably even on a weekly and you know even on a daily basis, right? You can you can if your intercompany status uh, is is uh, reflecting the latest position, all your market segment assignments are done on a real time basis. So most of the period end jobs can run on an uh, on, on an ongoing basis. So you you you'll not get 100% picture, but at least on a 90 to 95%, you you will know uh, you will have a, a very uh, near accurate picture of what you will see at the month end. So that's the difference between a soft close and a hard close. That's what this particular uh, um, uh, slide is talking about. It is a, a continuous reconciliation process, right? Uh, direct access to open items in accounts receivables and payables so uh, you know you can as you can see on the screenshots you can directly match of things you don't need to trigger a, a separate uh, bad job to do that as a month end process so that that's the message here uh, it is it is the, the 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 matching happens on the fly based on predefined characteristics in the system that we do as a part of the configuration Okay, and the, and the, and the GUI uh, is also very very much more user friendly. It it it, it shows it uh, diagrammatically, and there is much more analytical data there to work with. 
same with the GRIR reconciliation. If we, we, we would remember that we use this MR11 uh, transaction to match off, uh, you know, uh, the goods receipts with the invoice receipts and the, to, to charge off the difference. Uh, the, the, but they, here, uh, you know, we have a, a, a capability uh, in which uh, a significant improvement in the GRIR matching has been brought up, brought about. So, uh, from for, a look at if if you look at the screenshot, a look at the uh, a, a snapshot of the fear app will give you against one PO. Uh, how many GRs have been received against that GRs, how many invoices have been received, what action needs to be taken, whether something has been fully matched or some uh, still action is pending. All the complete snapshot is available to you in a fair year. So that way, you know, uh, the, this goods received invoice receipt uh, reconciliation process has also been simplified to a great extent. Okay, so that, that uh, app here uh, is what i was just now talking about right uh, the my apologies the screenshot is not uh, very very clear but you can see that it gives you a very good snapshot of all of all the uh, grir reconciliation status against all the pos uh, right what how many grs have you received how many irs have been done you know what is the difference quantity you had to run a job in ECC to find out these things, right? So you had to do an MR11 and you had to uh, match it on a PO basis on the selection screen. You had to give PO numbers and all that stuff. So here it is much more faster, much more organized. You can you can get a snapshot of where which all POs uh, need to be addressed on a priority basis. Okay, this this tool is called a reconciliation monitor. So. Uh, you know that's that's what you know uh, this slide gives a little more detail on uh, the derivation part of it you know in some cases you had to actually in ecc uh, automatic derivation of a profitability segment was not was not possible right so what what it will do is if it is not able to automatically derive it uh, the document will still be posted but uh, to profitability analysis you will have to pass it to profitability analysis at a later stage, right? So here, uh, since uh, with some customizing, we can uh, tell the system automatically to derive a, a, a COPA uh, segment or, or, a, or a characteristic on the basis of predefined uh, parameters that we specify in the system configuration. Right. So uh, whether it is a, a, a WBS or an internal order or any any cost object that you process, uh, that automatic derivation process is supported in all these tools. So that uh, you know uh, it, that is another added feature here, which which can uh, uh, greatly reduce the um, uh, account assignment process or uh, um, the the allocation process that happens on on CO. Right. This is one of the. This was one of the pain areas uh, on ECC. Right. Reconciling COPA uh, with FI. Right. We, this was one of the areas where there used to be a lot of differences. So that is again one area where they have brought in this major improvement. Okay. So that is that is from a process point of view. Right. Uh, but now, as I said, that there, there have been some arch architectural changes. Uh, they have dropped a lot of tables which were holding redundant data, right? Um, to support the new code, the, to support the new architecture, uh, SAP has actually made a lot of changes to uh, the programs uh, also uh, in, in CO because uh, we all would know that uh, in co typically in a manufacturing setup uh, these uh, settlement processes and working processes uh, take a lot of time at, at times they, there are a lot of cost objects or settlement objects running a variance job or a wip job or a settlement job it takes a lot of time so uh, what SAP has done is to support the new code, to support the new uh, architecture, to support the new table setup. They have come up. Uh, they have made some uh, code changes. They have made some uh, uh, enhancements to the code itself to support the HANA uh, structure. So all those new transactions they have appended uh, with an H. If you see from the outside, the selection screen will look uh, exactly the same. 
of uh, let's say CO88 and CO88H. Uh, but the difference is the code behind uh, the CO88H is actually optimized for uh, S4 HANA. So that will run uh, much faster on H4 uh, S4 HANA. So that 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 is usually our recommendation. Though CO88 is also available. Uh, if you are on HANA, you always use the HANA optimized transactions. So that is again one more thing which significantly reduces the actual runtime of the jobs. Okay, uh, so uh, that's the, there's nothing much in this slide. Just to reiterate the fact that the tool basically remains the same. Uh, what was in SAP uh, ECC, uh, it is the same tool that is still available uh, on S4 HANA. So if you are already used to using that, so it will be a benefit for you using it will be very familiar for uh, you to use that the same thing in s4 hana uh, and these are typically uh, sort of uh, licensing issues that again has to be confirmed and agreed with the sap because those things uh, dynamically change at times uh, but generally uh, people who are uh, have a license to use uh, financial closing cockpit in ecc are allowed to use the same thing on s4 hana and uh, from 1709 previously if you would remember that uh, in ecc financial closing cockpit is actually an add-on it is it comes as an optional add-on but in s4 hana 1709 it is an integral part of the package right it is it is not a sort of a something that is optionally a customer can select it comes along with the package as a part and parcel of the main core package Okay, along with the SAC financial closing uh, UA as well. So that we will see a slide on that towards the end. So this is how the actual closing cockpit tool looks on S4 HANA, uh, right? The user uh, interface will be pretty much similar, uh, but this is available in the form of a Fury app as well, but it has much more granularity. It has much more detail at a line item level right on s4 hana but the basic structure of the tool the basic sequencing but the basic flow will remain the same and along with uh, the uh, the uh, there is uh, for, along with the closing cockpit we have this uh, fury app a set of fury apps which uh, sap has bundled under uh, the name of uh, smart business uh, for financial close so typically you can see that uh, this is what i was saying in the beginning that it has a lot of fury apps uh, which specifically uh, are oriented towards uh, carrying out, performing, and uh, the financial flows and monitoring uh, the jobs and uh, the analysis part of it. Right? These uh, you can see that uh, financial flows, uh, SAP Smart Business for financial flows. So that gives you a very quick uh, snapshot of you know how many jobs have been completed, which legal entity is at what stage, what is spending where you know what corrective action needs to be taken so that that uh, from from a monitoring point of view that that becomes very helpful okay um so with that uh, i come to the uh, end of this uh, webinar i hope the information that uh, we uh, went through in this webinar was uh, of use to you and will be useful to you uh, you managed to get some insight about uh, the development uh, and the innovations uh, that have come about in S4 HANA, uh, especially from a month and uh, closing perspective and from an accelerated financial close perspective. If there are uh, any uh, questions uh, now at this stage, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, uh, thank you all for your attendance. Uh, uh, and I hope this webinar uh, was useful to you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.